This video is sponsored by DisabilityQuotes.com. They have been helping residents and also practicing physicians find the right type of disability insurance for the past 20 years. This type of insurance ensures that your income continues when you cannot continue practicing medicine. It's important, so important that I personally have disability insurance. Click on the link below in the description for a free quote from them today. What's up everyone, this is Dr. Webb here. Thank you guys for watching this video. Make sure you subscribe, new videos come in every week. You don't wanna miss these videos. Today, I have a very special guest who's gonna tell us all about concierge medicine as well as family medicine. So, Dr. Littleton, what's up man? Thank you for joining me today. Thank you for having me on, Antonio. How you doing? Good, 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 man. Go ahead and introduce yourself, man, and tell everybody who you are. So, hi, uh, hi world out there. Listen, I'm Dr. Jason Littleton. I'm America's energy doctor. I'm also a concierge medicine physician. And I get questions all the time, well, what concierge medicine is? And so basically what that is, it's direct primary care medicine. It's membership medicine where us doctors basically take care of our patients uh, for an annual fee. We don't take insurance. Um, this is a better way where we can actually service our patients uh, and not rush them. We can give them more time. Uh, we give each member our personal cell phone number. Now, I have my own practice called Littleton Concierge Medicine, mm -hmm. and every patient of mine has my personal cell number, can call me anytime. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, we, there's no clock to this. Basically, we, we, we develop a relationship. It's almost like a friendship. We make our patients feel like neighbors, so to speak. Yeah. And we, we give them the time that they need so yeah. that we can walk this journey with them. It's a great way to practice medicine. I have more time. I can take my, uh, you know, spend more time with my family, take my daughter to school, pick her up, swim lessons. But at the same time, I can give the type of care um, that I feel like we all got into medicine for. Got you. And, and going back into kind of your, you went to medical school in Michigan and also your, um, you did your training in Michigan? I went to the University of Michigan. Okay. I, for undergrad, then I went to Michigan State, uh, College of Human Medicine for medical school. And I got did you. residency through St. Joe's Ann Arbor and also uh, uh, um, Michigan State in Grand Rapids. Okay, and wh why did you choose, so you're a family medicine board certified family medicine physician. Absolutely. Why did you choose family medicine when you were going, you were in medical school? Well, what was it about family medicine that drew you to well, it? The thing that drew me to it is that when I got into medicine, one of the things that um, meant everything to me is I always wanted to be someone's doctor. I wanted to be the guy in charge. I wanted to be able to have a relationship with them from very early on in age to very uh, old and geriatric um, age. And so I wanted to be able to walk with them and make critical lifestyle and medical decisions with them through mm -hmm. all stages of life. And I felt that there was no other way uh, to do that but be a family medicine physician. Now my dad's a surgeon. I have a father who's a urologist mm -hmm. and who went to the University of Michigan as well for undergrad and medical school. And as much as I love surgery, and I do love surgery, yeah. Uh, still, just being that, hey, uh, the captain of the ship, someone who they can, you know, a person can come talk to you, say, hey, you know, what's going on in my health? Dr. Littleton, can you help me to get where I need to be? That meant everything to me. So that's why I wanted to become a family medicine doctor. Got you. So you see patients from when they're born all the way to geriatrics, a uh, wide range of patients. Absolutely. Absolutely. Got gotcha. you. Uh, again, actually, I used to deliver babies. <laughs> You know, it's uh, family med medicine physicians do that. We also are trained in obstetrics, as well as pediatrics and, um, you know, internal medicine. So really uh, all scopes. And, you know, I, honestly, that, that's applicable, I feel like, to all walks of life. So, you know, I've, um, I've really enjoyed it. Got you. And to become a family med medicine physician, you have to do four years of college, four years of medical school, and then three years of residency. Is that correct? Exactly. That's right. Okay. Um, so it's a lot of a lot of training, um, and you know, one of the things that I found is that when you do that, that prepares you uh, to practice primary care. But 
you know, again, uh, I know like we were talking about, you know, just over the phone, it doesn't necessarily prepare you for medical business or entrepreneurship. Gotcha. Gotcha. And after your, if you do a family medicine residency, what kind of other uh, options in terms of self-specialization can you do? I know some like sports medicine or what are, what are some different options that you can do? Great question. So, you know, uh, this is a question I hear all the time. Um, first of all, you know, you have family medicine residents that will go off and do internships like palliative care or even geriatrics or even sports medicine um, or even uh, pain medicine. Mm. Um, you know, there are many different avenues that you can do with your family medicine residency degree. Now, what I do, concierge medicine, you know, there's not a fellowship for that, but yeah. basically you really have to tap into the, your, your entrepreneurship side and, so to speak, take a fellowship. Uh, so, uh, like in uh, the business world, whether mm. you hire a, a, a business coach, like I have a business coach, um, mm. Dr. Stacia Pierce and Ariana Pierce. Uh, they're my business coaches, um, or you go to like business school. Now, business school uh, is important. My wife has an MBA degree; she went to business school, and they teach you certain things in business school that are apl applicable to really all you know all things uh, in um, uh, you know uh, a business career, medicine, things like that. But again, it may not keep you up to date as far as being an entrepreneur. That's a whole nother thing, and I'm sure we'll talk about that. Got you. So you uh, graduated from medical school, did your residency in family medicine, and how did you get into concierge medicine? How, how did that come about? Great question. Now, my uh, business coach, Dr. Stacia Pierce, was the uh -huh. one who did that to me. See, I was um, a physician uh, in uh, insurance-based practice, seeing 18 mm -hmm. to you know, 25 patients a day, uh, which is sometimes, you know, breaks down to four patients an hour, and, you know, I got to a place where I personally felt like I was on a hamster wheel. Yeah. You, know, you got, you see, start to see patients who have uh, problems that are 30 minutes or an hour in length, but you have to put them in a 15 minute slot. Mm. That's just how insurance uh, reimburses you. And so I was, I, I realized I wasn't happy with that, but I didn't realize that I wasn't happy with that. Just yeah. Very happy. And my coach said, listen, you know, one of the things you want to do is you want to do medicine on your own terms. And, mm. uh, to look into concierge medicine and I to be honest at the time I didn't even know what that was that was like yeah. a and so um, you know she gave me the information I met with one of the top concierge uh, doctors in the nation mm -hmm. and uh, learned everything I needed to know about concierge medicine and then eventually opened my own practice wow that's awesome and you've been in practice for how long uh, I, well listen I've been a physician for over 10 years yeah um, Middleton Concerts Medicine in 2016 set it up with one patient. And now hmm. we have tons of patients. I wow. take care of executives at Red Lobster. I take care of executives, CEOs all over the world. So, you know, it's, it's, it's really grown, um, having a good background in um, business and, and really entrepreneurship, knowing how to market yourself, yeah. knowing how to sell your practice, knowing yeah. how to... Uh, um, you know, really take the lessons you've learned in medical school and now brand yourself so that you can uh, bring in clients and patients. That was the key, and that's what I've learned in uh, um, uh, the entrepreneurial world with my business coach. Good. And I know you kind of explained it at the beginning of the video, but if you can break it down in layman's terms, what is a concierge physician? If you just break it down for people who have it's limited medical knowledge. Old-fashioned medicine. Uh -huh. you know, where we go to your home huh. and we sit down with you and we, we do the physical exam and we talk to you and go through all your problems in a way where you're not rushed. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't have a patient behind you gotcha. where we feel like, hey, you know, we've got 20, 20 minutes here, we've got to go. No, this is an opportunity where we can sit down face to face, talk mm -hmm. through all your medical problems, talk through anything that may be affecting your life. Hmm. Do the physical exam, and it's more of a comprehensive physical exam because we're not uh, constrained by time. Mm -hmm. And then we're on call for you 24-7. You can call us with anything as major as something uh, very serious as, um, you know, I get called on things like stroke and heart attack and things like that, or it could be something as simple as a hangnail. Yeah. We are your doctor. The old, in, in the old-fashioned sense. Now, again, you're not submitting your insurance card to us, but what you are submitting 
is basically you're paying an annual fee. And I have patients that sometimes um, will uh, pay that month to month or just pay one large sum. And I'm, that's a retainer and I'm there for them anytime they need. Gotcha. And can the only, the only specialty that can do that is primary care or are you familiar with any other specialties that do come to you? Absolutely. Now listen, um, any specialty really can do it. Okay. People think that uh, they can't because maybe they're so specialized. No, that's not necessarily true. I know cardiologists who are uh, concierge doctors. I know surgeons who are concierge doctors. Mm -hmm. And these are the surgeons who you might uh, see, they're like in plastic surgery, you might see them in Miami, you might see them in Hollywood, and they have their niche. And people pay cash. Wow. And, uh, you know, they're not, they're not, these guys aren't taking insurance. Some of the um, world famous uh, uh, plastic surgeons you see on TV, they're not taking insurance. It's not going to work there. Yeah. They're, you are paying them cash, whether it's an annual fee or a one-time uh, fee for whatever you want done. And they're on call for you. Um, so this works in many different disciplines. And one of the questions I get from physicians all around the world is, you know, how can I become a concierge doctor? And the reason I get this question is because doctors want to control their time. And they want to be able to give more time to their patients. Mm -hmm. And they don't want to, they want less paperwork. And they want to be able to practice on their terms. You know, when you practice insurance medicine, really, that patient is not your patient. Yeah. It belongs, that patient is a patient of the insurance that's reimbursing you. Yeah. It's, that, it's, a, it's, it's a patient of a third-party payer that um, is basically, you know, um, you know, you're submitting the claim to. Gotcha. So when you're a concierge doctor, they're your patients. You're working for them. And you're not necessarily working for the insurance plan. So that's a whole new paradigm shift. Gotcha. So you have a group of patients that are in your practice and they can contact you at any time. And then you Absolutely. go to their house to, they have their visits, their medical, their exams at their house. And yeah. if they get something like a CT scan or x-ray, you just send them to the hospital? Um, I can send them to the hospital. I can send them to a radio radiology center, imaging okay. center. Um, it doesn't matter. Now, in my practice, I have my own lab team, and I send mm. my lab team to people's homes to their office awesome. ten minutes, so they don't have to go to, um, you know, like um, you know, um, a Quest Lab or a Lab Core or something like that. And my patients love it because it doesn't interrupt their day. Yeah. Uh, kind of search medicine is about convenience. The people yeah. who um, are my patients are people who are tired of waiting in waiting rooms. They're tired of, um, you know, getting called back, mm -hmm. only being seen for 15 minutes when they have much more to talk about. And honestly, some of the greatest complaints that you hear from patients is that, you know, um, the patient, the doctor, you know, didn't spend time with me. Mm -hmm. or, um, my appointment was at 11, but I didn't get called back to 1145. It's mm -hmm. hard to plan your time around that. And people are willing to pay uh, cash in a concierge medicine practice to own and take back their time mm. to feel heard. It's a higher level of satisfaction. And for the doctor, there's less burnout mm -hmm. um, and there's just higher satisfaction because now we are practicing what we were trained to do. And I, I love it. I think it's the way to go. Got you. So in my few, few years of being a physician, I've seen it on both sides where patients, they complain about long, wait times to get in to see a physician and also doctors complaining about reimbursement and insurance companies. So do you think this is the, um, um, you know, solution for the future or you see this kind of growing and expanding in the future? I, I see it expanding. I think it is the solution uh, for the future. I have people, again, as a concierge physician, I control the rate. And mm -hmm. so uh, there are people who, uh, you know, uh, might feel like they can't pay uh, a certain fee to have a concierge physician. And that's tr not true. I make it affordable. Um, like I said, people can pay month to month. And then what that breaks down to is really small increments that really anybody can chew. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, and, and again, I can tailor plans for people. And so I really think it really is uh, part of the answer to the healthcare problem that we face as a nation because, you know, um, again, now I can take someone who might be on a low income if I want to say, hey, let me tailor you a plan. I'm your doctor, and you know, I'm going to give you more time than you normally would. And I have patients like that, and they love it because they feel like, you know what, this 
doctor is treating me like a VIP, and I am, and that's what my practice is all about. So I think it really changes the game. Um, I think uh, people who are insurance based, and I'm not knocking it. I mean, I'm just saying, um, if it, it, you know, concierge medicine is not for everybody. Uh, insurance medicine is not for everybody. They're on Facebook. They're on Instagram. They're out there. They want to know what solutions you have outside of the bread and butter antibiotic or uh, pain medicine. They, you, you know, they are watching TV. They're 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 googling things, and you want to have options to help treat uh, people's problems instead of the run of the mill option that you might uh, find in a textbook. Have to be in a. Gotcha. What is a typical day for you? Kind of starts at what time and ends at what time? And how does a day look for you? Great question. A typical day for me uh, starts, you know, usually around 9 p.m. Uh, excuse me, 9 a.m. Sorry. Um, and, um, you know, after I wake up, drop my daughter off to school, things like that, then, you know, 9 a.m. I'll run on some patients in the hospital. Um, but uh, I'll take some... Um, uh, I'll see maybe one or two or three patients in their homes. Now I do have an office and sometimes people prefer to come to the office other than be, rather than being seen in their home. Sometimes I'm going to a corporate office and I'm seeing uh, a client there. So from a day to day, I might see anywhere from three uh, to five patients, but the other part of the time I'm taking phone calls or I'm taking care of text messages from my clients or, you know, around central Orlando, answering questions, making prescriptions. But, you know, if I'm seeing three or five patients physically, understand the patients who I'm not seeing, they are still paying me. Gotcha. I'm on a retainer. And so I'm always making money. The practice is always growing and I'm always there for them in case of uh, an emergency uh, any type of uh, situation. But here's the key. Um, you know, my patients love it knowing that there is no urgency on their part to get in. They can call me anytime. I'll go see them two in the morning if they need to. I'll see them on a Saturday or a Sunday. Mm -hmm. It's the convenience that actually uh, brings a lot of security to them. Gotcha. And I, I know it probably ranges widely, but I get this is a very common question. How much can a concierge medicine physician make? Oh gosh, sky's the limit. <laughs> you can make over a million. You can make yeah, over a million gotcha. dollars. You know, um, it depends how much your annual fee is and what you're charging, uh, and how many patients you take on. A uh, typical concierge doctor will, uh, you know, take on uh, maybe 400 patients, whereas mm. a typical insurance-based uh, primary doctor will take on uh, 2,500. That's Whoa. a huge. Okay. Well, uh, I did an article on my website, JasonMD.com where we talk about, um, you know, basically conventional medicine. And we talk about how the conventional doctor has to see about 30 patients really to make a profit. They have to see about 15 patients in the first part of the day, you know, mm -hmm. or 15, 16, and that breaks down to like four an hour. You know, if you want to practice from eight to 12, and then again from one to five. And you have to understand if everyone's getting 15 minutes, you don't really have a lot of time to yep. use the restroom, or do um, you know fill prescriptions or answer um, you know uh, labs or anything like labs back or anything like that or make phone calls? You're really just running through the day. And most physicians, um, you know, when they get the uh, lunch, that's they're, they're just breaking even. They saw 15, 16 patients. They're just breaking even. They didn't make a profit. So that second half of the day is where they make the profit. Mm -hmm. And you know that honestly that. Um, I think that's frustrating. I don't think that's good. I think it's a, it's a situation where you can uh, make mistakes. You can miss things. You don't really have the time to take a deep breath and reflect on a person's uh, case or to really think through it. Mm -hmm. And you have to understand, these people who are coming to see you, um, mm -hmm. they might have waited a month, two months to get in. And so the conventional setting, I think, is oversaturated. And um, this is where I always encourage people. Um, you know, to look into constitutional medicine, get into it. Now, I, as I, we've talked off screen, I am uh, the head of the family medicine department at Orlando Regional Medical Center. I'm the chairman of family medicine. And I get questions from my department about, hey, what is constitutional medicine? How can I do what you do and things like that? And I love answering it all the time. And I, and I do. Yeah, awesome. And you have a book, new book out recently. Congratulations. Yeah, yeah, uh, thank you. Tell, tell you. us about your book and, and uh, what, what inspired you to write it? All right, so this is um, 
this is energized again. I wrote this book in 2012, and actually, uh, my coach inspired me to write it. You know, okay, awesome. The thing about having a coach: when you have a coach, they see your potential uh, yeah. better than you see your own potential. And yeah. she says, you know, you ought to write a book to help people be energized. Huh to help people um, put together everything you talk to them about as far as primary care, lifestyle modification, and write a book so that they can have more energy because they're living better, their health is better, they're eating better, they're training better. And we all want that. I think when you think about energy, it's oversaturated with energy drinks, it's oversaturated with you know people drinking three, four uh, cups of coffee a day. People are trying to find whatever it can uh, whatever they can find so that they can have more energy to get more things done. You measure energy by what you get done. Most people don't want to change their lifestyle, but lifestyle modification is important. I teach people in my book, Energize Again, that by setting proper routines, hardwiring yourself, taking small steps, I play a little play off my name, little changes make a ton of difference. Again, little 10. Um, we can hardwire good habits into your life so that you're exercising better living better. I have an acronym called MEDS, Move, Eat, Drink, Sleep. And I actually outline that in my book, um, Energize Again, how people can move better. I, I advocate five minutes, three times a week. That's only 15 minutes a week where you can get good cardiovascular exercise. If you get your heart rate between 50 to 85%, you can change your life. I talk to uh, eating um, organic foods, drinking great fluids, and getting proper sleep so that you can feel energized, reduce anxiety, and that sort of thing. Excellent. And where can people find your book or kind of learn more about you? You can go to jasonmd.com. Uh, that is uh, my main website, the practice website, and uh, you can learn more about me there. Also, uh, follow me on Instagram at Jason uh, or Dr. Jason Littleton, um, and that's the same um, that's the same name for Facebook as well. And I put out information all the time. You can sign up for my blog and stay up with my travels and my my speaking and um, my speaking arrangement. So, you know, um, I'm, I'm pretty accessible and I love talking to people about how they can have um, a more energetic life. Gotcha. And I'll put links to those descriptions in the uh, description below. Dr. Littleton, thank you so much for joining, joining me today. Uh, you've been uh, you're a real inspiration to a lot of us up and coming uh, physicians and everyone else out there. Thank you for uh, uh, joining me this evening. Dr. Webb, it's, it's a pleasure to be on your show. I thank you so much. And also, I have one last question. What advice would you give to pre-med students out there, medical students? What, what advice would you give to them? So I would say, listen, you know, um, medicine is very rewarding. It's also hard. It's also difficult. Um, you have to know this is what you want to do. And when you make that decision, you dig your heels in, and you do everything you can to get there. Um, Helping people is something that we all want to do. And I believe that every uh, person has something unique to mm -hmm. offer in the world. So you just, you set your mind, you say, I want to be a doctor. I want to be a surgeon. Uh, do whatever it takes to get there. Uh, stay focused and change the world with what's inside of yourself. You don't have to be like me or, or like any other physician. You have to be like you. Um, and you have a lot to offer. So I just say stay focused, dig your heels in and get it done. Excellent. Thank you so much for that. And everyone else out there, thank you guys for watching this video. Make sure you subscribe. New videos coming every week. You don't want to miss these videos. We'll see you next time.